more surface area you have, the more heat there is that can get hit by air, which can make the heat dissipate, which can make the whole machine run cooler. But liquid-cooled motorcycles are very different. Liquid-cooled motorcycles, instead, they have more stuff going on. They have radiators, and they have thermostats, and they have little tunnels inside of them where coolant goes through. So almost like a little sewer system of coolant that just passes through the in tubes inside of your motor so that when there's hot areas and a cool liquid passes over them, it's kind of like hitting your wrist with the hose on a hot summer day, cools down the rest of your body. That's sort of the same idea of how liquid coolant works. So what are the pros and cons of each? Well, let's start with air-cooled bikes. Air-cooled, pro, really simple and straightforward. There's not a lot going on there. There's not a lot of extra stuff that can break. Con, you're kind of dependent on being moving. You're kind of dependent on there being wind. If you're gonna be stuck in traffic, you run a risk of overheating. And I know, there's a lot of guys who say, I run an air-cooled Harley through the desert all day long at a million and six thousand degrees and i've never Oof. heard of you and i think you're missing the key point is that you are riding through the desert if you're riding through the desert you have air you have movement you have the breeze even if it's warm air it's not thousands of degrees warm like it is inside your motor where things are exploding and being set on fire so even hot desert air is actually cooler than inside your motor that's why air cooled bikes work in the desert air cooled bikes do not work so well in the city where you're stuck in bumper to bumper gridlock in a city like LA, New York, Toronto, etc. Yeah. So let's talk about the pros and cons of liquid pool bikes. Well, liquid pool bikes, obviously, if you're stuck in a very densely populated area and you're just going bumper to bumper traffic, they are still going to cool. You're going to hear the fan coming on. Some of them even have little temperature gauges. So you'll see that your bike is never getting too hot, which is kind of nice to see. You have less heat radiating off your bike, making you hotter while you're sitting in traffic, so that's pretty cool. They do say that liquid-cooled bikes tend to last longer, and the reason is because there's less wear on the gaskets and stuff. Things are not overheating as much. Things are not being subjected to such extreme temperatures. So in theory, a liquid-cooled bike could last longer. That's really going to depend on a case-by-case -case basis, though, to get to that much. Downsides. Liquid-cooled bikes add more complexity. So we have thermostat. Those can break. Trust me. I've had to pay for those on, on my Jeep, actually. Yeah, that was not fun. Speaking of Jeeps, you guys like my new background Jeep thing? Check that out. Let me know in the comments if you like it or not. Is it lame? I'm going to find you on the wall. Let me know if it's lame. Alright. Um, yeah. Rawr. of the cool bikes. You have more stuff, more complexity, more things that could break. Your ride could break. Your ride could get damaged. Um, your coolant, I think you have to replace that every, like, 7,000 miles, something like that. So it's not, a, it's not like a big job, but it is something that to worry about to do versus air cooled bikes, you don't have any maintenance. So those are kind of your pros and cons. Now, the next topic is, of course, which one is best for you? And then we're going to talk about which one I prefer. So, in terms of what's best for you, I think I've made it pretty clear by now. If you are somebody who live in a city like New York, you live in a city like LA, you live somewhere with crazy traffic, personally, I would recommend a liquid cooled bike. However, if you live pretty much anywhere else, really, an air-cooled bike is not the end of the world. Myself, personally, what would I pick? Honestly, I would, I'll put it to you like this. Once upon a time, I was a university student, and I always wanted a Harley Sportster. So I sold my liquid-cooled Suzuki Boulevard M50, sold it, and I bought an air-cooled Harley Davidson Sportster. And my dad was in and out of hospitals in downtown Toronto. And I was working two jobs in downtown Toronto. And I was a university student in downtown Toronto. And I hated my sports tour. I thought I would love it. I thought it was my dream bike. And I hated it because of how miserable it was because I was just stuck in gridlock, stop and go traffic on an air-cooled bike, and it sucked. And what did I do? I sold my air-cooled Harley Davidson, and I bought another <laughs> liquid-cooled Suzuki Boulevard at 50. However, now, I never have to go downtown. I never have to get into the core. So at this point in my life, I would be totally okay with an air-cooled bike. And there's another thing. This is kind of a bonus, because I think I covered everything I said I was going to, but here's a bonus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the door just slammed shut on me. Here's kind of a bonus. Um, air-cooled motorcycles can also be equipped with oil coolers. Oil coolers are a little bit of a different thing. There are all kinds of other things, like... Harley has liquid-cooled heads, where just the head is liquid-cooled of the cylinder. Um, but oil coolers will help to cool your oil a little bit. 
in my opinion, this extra stuff is not great. And here's why. Whether it's like foil coolers for Triumphs, for Ducati Monsters, for all that kind of stuff, while you get a little bit of the cooling benefit, not as much as if you had a proper liquid-cooled motorcycle, you have all of the cons of having a liquid-cooled bike, of, of more complexity, of having this like rad and thermostat and whatever, maybe just not a fan, but you have all the other stuff and gift modes. So if you got some extra stuff, whatever, that's fine, that's okay too. Basically, I, I would make this decision based on how much you like the bike you're looking at, what the price is, how well the bike's been looked after, and especially on where and how you're going to be riding it. My name is Adrian from eMotorcycle.com. If you like this video, please hit like. If you have any questions about air cool, like cool bikes, or questions about anything motorcycle related that you would like answered, please leave them for me down in the comments. I love answering all you guys' questions, and uh, I'm a big nerd, so I'll probably, if I don't know the answer, I'll probably look it up and write you a whole book report. Um, Tell you what, right? 